forward with none other than uh, the chairman of SBI, Mr. Dinesh Khara himself. Mr. Khara, fantastic to have you back on ET Now. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to start with the moot point, sir. And the moot point is that credit growth is back. Credit growth is here to stay. Uh, are you excited about the trends in credit growth? Or you think it's too early to get excited? Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Nikunj, for having me on your show. Well, of course, uh, the credit growth is a reflection of what the underlying economy is. And uh, of course, we have seen that uh, the growth, of course, is at 13.5% at for the quarter one of financial year 23. And if we really look at it, we have actually seen a significant structural shift since 2014. The country is now the fifth largest economy. Interestingly, we have surpassed UK, which is the fifth largest economy, as early as December 21 itself. So, uh, you know, this is something which actually augurs very well. And uh, the share of India's GDP is now 3.5% as against 2.6%, which it, it used to be in 2014. And we expect it to further go beyond 4% by 27. So that very clearly means that Indian economy, as compared to its other competitors, is doing much better. And I think if at all this space continues, then obviously the economy will do well, and also it will be a huge opportunity for the banking system also to really grow in the years to come. Mr. Khanna, while credit growth numbers are looking strong on the deposit growth front, I'm afraid the deposit growth is lacking the credit growth. And that is a challenge for the entire banking system per se. So do you think this imbalance could lead to uh, some degree of uh, changes, uh, pressure when it comes to NIMS? Well, uh, the recent numbers which have come in from RBI as on 26th of August, the aggregate deposits have grown by about 5.2 trillion, uh, which is almost 3.2% on a YTD basis. Uh, I think, uh, though, of course, in the, before that, the earlier number, of course, showed a very sluggish trend, but of course, it has picked up now. And I expect that the YOY deposit uh, for us also is somewhere around 9%. Though, of course, credit is growing at about 15%. But I think uh, in the past couple of years, we have witnessed a situation where the credit growth was not there and the money actu actually got deployed into some of the investment instruments. So that kind of a redemption will happen and all that redemption will actually be available for supporting the credit growth. So I think I don't expect that it is it should be a huge issue. And moreover, you know, there's always a lag when the, when the economic growth recovers. Then by that time, uh, it it has got a lag in terms of generating of the of the deposit for the uh, for the retail depositor. So that is the kind of a situation we expect to witness uh, going forward as well. And apart from that, uh, there are also uh, some amount of spending which is expected from the government of India also in the uh, in this uh, second half of the financial year. So that will also bring in more money into the system. So which will also give an opportunity for the banking system to mobilize the deposits. Mr. Khanna, if I look at numbers for the quarter gone by for State Bank of India, given how bond yields had moved, there is an impact on the Treasury side. Now that bond yields have stabilized, will MTM gains come back and will that start improving your ROAs automatically? Yeah, I expect so because the last valuation which you had done, it was at about 7.45 or 7.50. And the current one is somewhere around 7.15. So naturally, we have no uh, uh, MTM loss. I, I, and I expect that on 30th September also, the 10-year GCI could be somewhere around the same level or it might marginally go up also. But nevertheless, I don't expect that it will once again uh, come back to 7.45, 7.50. So if that is the situation, then of course, we are very well placed. We don't expect that we'll have to book any more MTM losses. Maybe there could be a situation where we can actually write down the, the provisions which we've already created. So if I put two and two together, Mr. Khara, if MTM losses are not there, and if I look at the other basic financial ratios, uh, looks like SBI is on course to perhaps move to its ROA of 1%? Uh, in fact, uh, last quarter also, if at all, we would have ignored 
the MTM impact, then we were actually having ROI of 0.89 and ROE of 18.63%. So that is the kind of a number. So MTM is more of a timing issue. So I think I expect that uh, we should be somewhere in that vicinity only. What are the big turning point for SBI was when the bad loan cycle uh, got over and a new credit growth cycle started. It started just before COVID. But can I say the next turning point for SBI would be that when RA, ROA will go above 1% because mathematically that changes the inflection at the bottom line? Yeah, I do agree with you and I hope uh, with uh, the reduced credit cost and uh, with a very sharper focus in terms of augmenting the revenue streams of the bank, perhaps it should become a sustainable ROA and which will actually be an inflection point in many respects. If I look at the banking sector, sir, for SBI, uh, the market share is intact. You're getting almost 20% of the total uh, uh, new deposits. So State Bank of India is on a completely different plane. But if I look at other smaller banks and mid-tier banks, we are losing market share. They are not getting CASA. Uh, so how is the sector headed? I mean, will big banks get bigger? I think there is a room for all the players. The only thing is that the smaller banks will have to find their niche and will have to do well in that niche. Whereas bigger banks would have a larger platform in which they will have to operate. So I think there's a good scope for uh, all the niche players. Uh, I, I mean, all the players, niche as well as bigger. Remarkable success for State Bank of India has been your dominant market share in the home loan segment. Your CASA is one of the lowest in the industry and your lending rates uh, in the home sector or the home finance business has been very attractive. But given that there is a big merger which is due between HDFC Bank and HDFC Limited, will that change the rules of the entire uh, home finance business? No, I think uh, what you mentioned, of course, uh, there will be one more significant player. They were already significant in many respects. And uh, uh, now the only thing is that it becomes a bank. So how does it really make a difference? It's a, so I think as far as the home buyers are concerned, uh, I think uh, we have a decent market share and the market in which you operate ha ha happens to be quite distinct as compared to uh, the other larger player where they operate. Uh, I think there is enough demand for uh, the home loans in the in the economy. And uh, going forward, in fact, post-COVID, we have, we have started seeing that the trend is even further strengthening because now people have realized that they need to have bigger houses also. So I think um, uh, overall across the, ac across the country, we are seeing very decent demand in home loans. Uh, I think what makes a difference here is the ability to source the proposals and also deliver in time. So that is something which is going to the differentiator. So I think from that perspective, we have invested well in terms of uh, creating the capacity for sourcing as well as for the delivery. So I think uh, there is uh, ample scope for us, for each of us to grow. And uh, we see very decent trend as far as the mortgage loan book is concerned. Mr. Khan, it's quite remarkable that if I look at all the businesses of State Bank of India, uh, you're number one. You're number one in insurance, number one in the mutual fund business, number one when it comes to the capital market business. So which is the category, Mr. Khara, which is left where you want to, you have aspirations to be the number one? No, being the leading player of the economy, we are, our natural place is number one only. So I think uh, we'd like to be number one in all, uh, in all the activities, whatever we undertake. And uh, we are, and, and wherever we are not, we are endeavoring that we should also become number one in, in those activities. We have got a very small entity which is broking. I mean, broking business, we were not doing all that well. Now we are building up those muscles also so that we should become number one in that entity as well. Mr. Khara, the growth or the credit growth of 15%, uh, is it a combination of working capital and uh, term loan or is it largely a function of still working capital? No, actually, the this 15% growth is coming essentially from our uh, uh, retail loan book, which is about 18%, corporate loan book has grown about 10%. And similarly, SME is, is also growing at 10%. So uh, when it comes to the corporate book, there is some part of it is term loan, but uh, I mean, I, I would say that 
it is equally split between the working capital as well as into the investment credit, which is term loans. Mr. Khanna, I'm just going to expand this question for the benefit of our viewers, which is that when interest rates they go higher, banks they tend to enjoy a superior spread because cost of deposit increases with a lag effect. Now, interest rates, Mr. Khanna, have already gone up for about two quarters. Do you think the lag effect benefits which SBI has enjoyed that may not be visible in the second half now? Yeah, what happens is that uh, some of them, of course, almost about 74% of our book is linked to either MCLR or EBLR. So when it comes to uh, the interest rate clause, whether it is linked to MCLR, MCLR normally takes it a longer time for it to really show up in the in the books of the bank. And EBLR is, uh, is actually uh, gets reflected in a shorter duration. So I would say that MCLR actually, it, uh, it, it starts... Uh, showing up in the book in about six months' time, whereas EBLR would start showing up in about a quarter. So I think that is the broad composition and how it really impact the earnings of the bank. So uh, that's how I expect it to really uh, show up in the earning of the bank also. To ask you uh, a question which surely is going to be making headlines. Are you happy with the way how the Yes Bank deal has migrated because it's a large investment for State Bank of India, given that there would be dilution in SBI after the uh, new P investor? What is the long-term uh, strategy of SBI when it comes to owning stake in a Yes Bank? As of now, we were required to stay invested in Yes Bank for three years, which is till March 23. So we have not yet taken a call. We have to deliberate it at the board level and also subject to approvals from the uh, the regulators also, if at all. Uh, we'll be taking a call accordingly once uh, we have some kind of indication. Uh, or maybe, in fact, when we will be, will be approaching towards March 23, that will be a point of time when we will deliberate this on the board of the bank and we'll take a call. Clear the area, Mr. Khara. SBI feels that Yes Bank is an investment. It is not part of the core integral strategy. Now, whether the decision to sell happens next year or after that, that's a board decision. But in general, it will be treated as an investment in your book. It is, of course, an investment in the book. Mr. Khara, as we look into the future, and now that CAPEX cycle is picking up, do you think the credit growth number of 14 to 15% would be a conservative number? Because if I speak to corporates, Mr. Birla is using the word corporate ka mahakum. If I look at Reliance Industries, Mr. Ambani in the last board meeting has announced a $50 billion capex. Adani Group is, on a, uh, is really on a binge when it comes to doing capex. If large corporates are really talking about large co corporate cycle, do you think the number of 14 15% credit growth could be a conservative number? No, I think it would be more sustainable. This is something which uh, how I would like to react. And if it sustains for some time to go, which will actually support our overall growth story of the economy, where we are trying to achieve a growth rate of about 7% plus for foreseeable future. So that is possible only and only if this, uh, I mean, this kind of investment comes in. And to support, it will get funded from the bank's uh, uh, bank leverage and part of it will also get funded from the market instruments as well. So I think uh, the uh, the interesting point is that uh, there's a very clear visibility of demand, which actually uh, uh, has given the confidence to large corporates to really ramp up their capacity. So I think uh, overall, this is something which is very positive for economy and it looks like that it is actually the India movement now. Anisha joining us as well. Well, yes, it does look like it's an India moment and CAPEX recovery is something that we have been hearing from a lot of corporates as well. But one way the, you know, SBI has actually generated value for its shareholders through value unlocking. We have seen the listing of various of your subsidiaries, but going forward, um, is there a plan to um, unlock value through, let's say, the general insurance business, mutual fund? Um, your digital uh, arm, Yono, has also been doing quite well. Could you speak to us a bit more about that? Yeah, as far as Yono is concerned, it is more of a delivery platform, which is very integral to the bank. So we would like to create value for all of our stakeholders uh, by ensuring that it is it it becomes a, uh, a uh, it becomes an instrument for the frictionless customer experience. So that is how we look at Yono. And when it comes to our other subsidiaries, we ensure that we we have the credible products 
manufactured through these subsidies. Uh, well, of course, uh, when it comes to monetizing these investments, much of it depends upon the requirement of these companies on their own. So I think uh, we will get guided by their own consideration in terms of ramping up the capital and supporting the growth opportunities. And I think uh, as far as our other subsidies are concerned, general insurance happens to be one which will be actually capital intensive industry. And uh, I think, uh, but I think it is too premature for it to really go, uh, go for listing. Maybe we will nurture it for maybe a couple of more years. And that will be a point of time when we would like to really list it out. Mr. Khara, good morning. What, is the, would, what would be the outlook on SBI cards in terms of, you know, how we're seeing their overall margins improving? We are seeing a robust business momentum as well across the board. Is there any sort of a concern uh, with respect to intense competition from some of the private banks? Will maintaining market share be a challenge? No, I think uh, it's a very unique uh, entity by itself because when it, it's, I think it is only, maybe there is one more standalone card company. So to that extent, they are actually, they have got the advantage also in the sense that they can uh, reach out to multiple other distribution channels. They were actually the largest open, ma open market player at, uh, and also they still continue to be the largest open market player. So they are not really bound uh, with the bank's customer, they can they can source card on their own also. So uh, they have the best of the governance practices in terms of risk management. They are in a position to uh, ensure that uh, they manage the company very well. So I think uh, to that extent, we have already seen the the turnaround in the in the performance in the last quarter. So I expect that they will have a very decent growth trajectory and a, and a, and a very sound business model too. Mr. Khara, a couple of uh, uh, last questions. 15% uh, growth is going to be sustainable. I'm just taking a leap from your answer. If that is true, then at what time curve you will be able to grow and sustain a 15% credit growth without raising capital? Uh, well, I think uh, we are very, very closely looking at uh, the need for capital, and we have already raised about 6,800 crore plus. Uh, through 81 instruments only about a week, about last week. Uh, we are very soon we'll be raising another tier two bond also. So I think uh, there are multiple options available to us. And in any case, you know, at the year end, when we have an opportunity of flowing back the profit, even that also addresses part of the requirement for the CET. So last year also we had plowed back almost about 25,000 crore plus. So hopefully this year also will have a similar situation going forward. So if that is a kind of a situation, then uh, naturally, you know, with the 81 tier two and also clawback, these are multiple options which are available to us for ensuring that we should be in a position to grow as far as the capital is concerned on a sustainable basis. But some would also argue and say that if interest rates, they continue to move higher and especially in sensitive segments like home loan or car loan, what becomes what could be called as an unafford borrowing rate? How far are we away from that? Because if inflation is so stubborn, interest rates will go higher, it will eat into savings, it will, it could potentially have an impact on EMI and repayment capacity. I do agree, but we normally look at our EMI and NMI ratios when we lend to our customers. So. Uh, the other aspect which is there is with the inflation, invariably the salaries also go up. And also, I agree with what you are saying, but nevertheless, I think during inflationary conditions, it is a, it, it, it is generally said that if at all you you create an asset by raising leverage, it is to the advantage of the of the of the asset owner. So that is the that's the real scenario. So I expect that in that kind of a situation and keeping in mind the aspirations of the uh, of the Indian citizens in terms of improving their quality of life, acquiring more and more uh, convenience uh, uh, assets. So I think uh, eventually that is something which is going to really fuel such kind of a demand and uh, which will support uh, the economy too. Well, Mr. Kara, it's always a pleasure to have you on ET now. Thank you very much for accommodating this interview request. I know it's a busy morning for you and yet you've accommodated so much of time for us. Really appreciate that. 
थैंक यू वेरी मच निकुंज जी थैंक यू